Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, and today's subject is fear. And how do we deal with fear and handle when fear arises, which that happens for each and every one of us. And it may be happening on a daily basis, uh, but it is uh, a major issue that most human beings throughout their lives deal with. And in some ways, it appears to be ruling uh, humanity. And it's been being used as a weapon and a source of manipulation that can control humans uh, and humans' behaviors and decision making and the direction that they will be going. So we're going to get into that and talk about that more in details. Um, as usual, let's start with the meditation. Um, we're just going to simply hang out in this moment. Those of you who've been with me before, you're, you're familiar with how we do the work. So we're simply going to divert our attention inwards and shifting the attention towards within ourselves. And we'll bring our attention to that place where before your thoughts arise. What's before your thinking? Before a thought arises, what's there? Pre-thinking. So again, when you're bringing your attention towards the source of your thoughts and you're just looking back inwards, we're not looking for an object. We're not looking for another thought. We're looking, we're investigating by bringing our attention inwards towards this place where thoughts rise from. They come from somewhere. So we're going to go look at that. We're tracing our thoughts back and we're looking at this place before your thoughts arise, what's there? And actually, this doesn't require any effort. So it's effortless. It's just simply, we're just taking a look. We're looking inwards by bringing our attention inwards. So go ahead and do that. Take a deep breath. Just relax yourself. I'm encouraging you not to use a mantra, not to make any sort of visualization. You don't even need to bring your focus on your breath because all of these things require effort. All I'm asking you to do is simply bring your attention towards the source of your thoughts. And as you do this, <coughs> your mind automatically goes into silence. You automatically become quiet, almost instantly. <clears throat> and if thoughts arise from that place, it's okay. If you're hearing noises in your head, that's fine.
and just naturally breathe and you have your attention inwardly focused on one point. Before your thoughts arise, what's there? And just sink into this place without any effort. Just be yourself. For being yourself, it doesn't require any kind of effort. You simply sink inside in this place within yourself. And you are, you are, you are here and you're present, present with yourself, without an agenda, without trying to get to anywhere, without trying to accomplish anything. You're simply hanging out, spending time with yourself at your natural state the presence.
you're naturally hanging out in this place, being with yourself, your holy self, the presence, and by hanging out by yourself here in this moment, you are having an encounter with the presence, the presence of God, Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul. You're allowing the presence to reveal itself because you're taking the time to stop and not being engaged with anything else. Your attention has come to your inner self. Your attention is on only one thing, and that's presence, the presence of God, your divine self. For that, you don't have to do anything. Effort is not required. It's a non-engagement <clears throat> process. By simply falling into your natural state, we are conditioned to continuously trying to do something, trying to get somewhere. But here, now, we're simply not trying to do anything. And in the beginning, for the mind, it may be a bit difficult. Because it's conditioned to have a false belief that you have to do something to come to peace and to love and to feel God, which in fact, you don't have to do anything because the presence God is always here. It's your own source. It has no requirements. <clears throat> That's the beauty of it. So by simply hanging out here by yourself, and disengaging from all your gadgets and your story, then you encounter Her Majesty, the presence begins to reveal itself.
and naturally you begin to experience a deep state of peace and blissful blissfulness you begin to feel the bless It's extremely simple, yet it appears to be impossible for the conditioned mind. The mind will come and do anything to create a distraction. You will hear all kinds of excuses and thoughts arising in your mind that you are wasting your time. This is not the way because you're not doing anything. And this is not real because if it was real, you would have to do something. <clears throat> so then the mind wants to trick you back into engagement with itself. Slowly, slowly, we're going to come back, bringing our attention <clears throat> to this state of awakeness, to this other state. So here you have given yourself an opportunity for transmission to take place. By simply stopping, you stop whatever you're doing, you stop you take a deep breath, you sink inside yourself. You know, it's like, let's say I have a cup of cup here, it's tea or water or anything, and I pour in a lot of sugar in it. And I'm stirring it. So there's a lot of stuff in there. So so you have a cup, you have a clear glass, and you pour a lot of sugar in it, and you're staring at it all the time. So it's not clear. But when you stop and you wait, the sugar is going to fall. Whatever is not dissolved in the water, it's going to fall back down and comes to the bottom of, of the cup. <coughs> and then the liquid becomes clear again. So it's no wonder you can't be clear or you feel foggy in life or confused or afraid or in anxiety or have questions all the time. It's because you don't stop. 
you're constantly staring the cup. So in staring the cup on constant ba basis, what happens is you're activating your mind. The mind's activated continuously with all kinds of different worries, fears, questions, worries of and being of uncertainties of how things are going to work out in life. So when you come across the right teachings and the teaching is transmitting to you, is directing you to simply stop and pause everything that you're doing in your life and disengage yourself from the world of thoughts, the other world, the inner world, it doesn't matter. You simply disengage from it and you bring your attention inwards and you start to focus you're bringing your attention, your focus, focus, attention, same thing, inwardly to one-pointedness, only one thing. Bringing it inwards towards the one who is watching, towards the one who is looking from inside. So then everything automatically becomes quiet. It's like a generator is going like wah, 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 and you pull the plug, and then it just wah. Everything becomes quiet. And as everything becomes quiet, you get to see the truth, the truth of who you are. And that's bliss. It's silence, it's tranquility, it's balance, it's the heart, it's love. I'm using different words, pointing out at what doesn't have a name, your natural state, pure presence, simply being here. And then you start to see that you feel really good. You begin to see as you do this work that you're in sync, in harmony with life. Actually, there is no boogeyman out there trying to get you. You start to see that everything works in perfection. And the whole business of creation is in the hands of the creator. And you don't need to worry about it. You can just relax. Your fears begin to disappear. Because fear is a thought and an emotion that keeps rising, it arises in your consciousness, in your awareness, in your field of observation, in your field of your senses, in the field of this presence. It, it's like a bird traveling through sky and the sky is blue it's a beautiful sunny day and you see a bird flying through it. So fear is just something that passes through you. And since it's 
you have given it a lot of importance from childhood and we've been programmed by our parents, by our media, television, society, the news. So it becomes a very valid and powerful emotion that rises within us. And, and naturally, I mean, a lot of people, since they identify with it, there's an identification with the fear. So you buy it, you buy it and it paralyzes you. It creates contraction, you get really contracted. And it paralyzes your life, paralyzes you. That you can move, you can do certain things. It brings a lot of jealousy, anger. But as you start to recognize and realize the truth of who you are, who are you really? And if the truth of who you are can ever be touched, it can ever be altered, it can ever be stained. If the truth of who you are could be bought, manipulated, compromised. When you realize the truth of who you are and you realize that nothing can really touch who you really are because the truth of who you are is beyond and above everything else. So it can be touched, it can be compromised, it can be stained, it can be manipulated. <clears throat> So in the recognition of the truth of who you are, fear has no power. It has zero power. The only time it has power is when you forget the truth of who you are. You identify with your thinking process, you identified with your changing emotions and you identify with the meat as that's who you are <coughs> and you forget that god is the one who's running the show you forget that god is the one who's breathing through you right now this is the breath of god breath of her majesty the supreme soul, the supreme being, that its existence allows every human being to open their eyes, to breathe, to walk, to talk, to laugh. Every breath you, can, you take is because of the presence of the Supreme Spirit in us and in everybody else. So the Supreme Spirit is in you. That's why you're alive. Otherwise you would be like a chair, like a rock. It would be a dead object. If you are able to move around, think, walk, laugh, love, reproduce, eat, whatever, means that the living spirit is in you. And if the living spirit is in you, then the living spirit is the one that is in charge and your life it's your li the living spirit's responsibility. It is the living spirit that is responsible 
for your life. So you can relax in that. You can just say, oh, okay. Because the living spirit has been around ever since the ever since. It's been around for thousands of thousands of thousands of years. And many, many, many people have been born by the grace of the living spirit and many, many people die by the grace of the living spirit. So it knows what it's doing. It's the creator and it's dealing with its creation. So you can leave that business to God and not worry about it. And trust in that, that handles everything. But it's difficult to do that when your mind is conditioned and you're continuously bombarded by a lot of different teachings, different people, the media, trying to individualize you, trying to make you think and believe that you are separated from the source and you are in, in a situation that your being is being threatened, that you may be destroyed, you may, you may die, you may be, something may happening to you because you think you're separated from the source. And in that, it arises a lot of fear in you until the grace comes to your life, the wisdom comes to your life, and it reminds you and it starts to shake you to wake you up to the truth of who you are. And as your attention goes inwards, you begin to get a glimpse of the truth of who you are. And the more you pay attention to it, the more you touch it, the more you begin to realize that the living spirit, God within you, takes care of everything. And you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to worry about it. All you do is you trust, you trust. Everything is going to be taken care of. Everything is always taken care of. Look back at your life and see how up to this point, you've been brought up to this, to this place. How? in a very magical way, you have been carried to this point in your life. And the more you sink in and you trust this and you relax into what is, the acceptance of what is, the acceptance of this manifestation, the less you resist it, the less you try to manipulate things, that things should be the way you want them to be because you're conditioned to believe that things have to be in a certain way. Okay, it's your conditioning to believe that things have to be right. A right is only in your mind or things have to be this way or that way you are conditioned to believe into that. So you want to force your idea on life, that life doesn't know what it's doing and you know better than life. So what happens, you starting to create resistance. So you're resisting the wisdom of life because you don't understand the wisdom of life. 
sometimes some really screwed up things are happening in the world and in your point of view it's really wrong but you don't understand what god is doing so now you're resisting it and as you start to resist it you create friction and it results in your suffering you begin to suffer because you're resisting the flow of life as if life doesn't know what it's doing and you know better and that comes from our own ignorance because we've only been here for a few years and life's been here ever since the ever since billions and billions and trillions of people have come to life and left obviously life knows what it's doing if this world was going to end it would have ended by now the supreme soul knows what it's doing so we can trust in that and in that trust your fear disappears and even though events happen in life that they seem really screwed up they seem really wrong and there's nothing you can do about it you have absolutely no control over it as i'm sure you have experienced many many different things you are passionate about it you get very angry about it you want to express your voice about it and you feel like you need to do something to change it but no matter what you do nothing changes i'm talking about those kind of things and there is a wisdom that the creator is allowing these things to happen because even those people who are doing something wrong they don't really have a power source of themselves separated from the source it's not like bad people evil people are separated from god and they have their own individual free will that they're able to do wrong things they have no power of their own selves their very existence comes from god so if god allows them to be there to do something wrong is because there's a wisdom in it which you and i don't understand so again mind your own business you work on yourself you learn to find peace within yourself you learn to find equilibrium within yourself take your attention and focus on the world off of how many screwed up things you find in the world and bring your attention inwards learn to go beyond your busy mind learn to come to silence within yourself and as you do that you will discover that all of a sudden you find yourself in a peaceful world all of a sudden you find yourself among conscious people all of a sudden you begin to see that everything is harmonized you find balance within yourself and you discover yourself that you're not bothered by a lot of things and fear doesn't arise you inside you the way it used to this world that you're perceiving and you're experiencing and you're touching through your five senses 
it's an animation, it's a dream, it's a projection of one mind. It has no substance of itself. It has no power of itself. And it disappears as you bring your attention inwards into the source of yourself. As your mind goes into silence, the world that you're perceiving and you bothered with will disappear too. <coughs> as you can experience, when you sleep and you don't dream at night, you go to sleep and you don't dream, no dreaming, zero dreaming, you wake up the next day and you say, oh my God, I was gone. I slept so well, Zarathustra, I don't know what happened. I was gone. Because everything disappears. Your problems disappear, your children disappear, your financial issues disappear, your home disappears, your cat and your dog disappears, your job disappears, economical problems in the world disappear, politics disappear, because you are not there, because you disappeared. because you went into silence and everything disappeared. So where is the world when you sleep and you don't dream? Where does it go? But then when you wake up in the morning, the first thought arises in your mind and that's the I thought, me, oh, I, I am a man, I am, my name is John, my name is James, my name is Zarathustra, I'm a teacher, I'm a father, I'm a mother, I'm a nurse, I'm American, I'm Persian, I'm Norwegian, I'm Swedish, blah, 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 blah. The whole world comes back with its problems and challenges. Everything comes back into manifestation. Comes back because you came back. You disappear and the world will disappear. All you have to do is get rid of yourself. and all the world's problems are gone. And when I say get rid of yourself, is the idea of yourself. The idea of yourself that you are separated from the source. So look back, look inside, look within yourself and challenge one thing that I'm going to share with you, that in most teachings, you never hear about it, because this is something we never challenge. I say that um, my feelings are hurt, I have a busy mind, I had some traumatic experiences in my life, I'm really concerned about world's issues, I'm really concerned about our climate, I'm concerned about our water, I'm concerned about our, I'm concerned about these things. So, I, and I'm an object. I, this me, is an object 
And the problems in the world are the subject, including my, my emotions, including my, thought, my thoughts, including my family, including my, my financial issues. So this me, this I, the subject, all of your life, you've been operating from this place. Your entire life, you are focusing on things that are happening in your field of awareness. So you never paid any attention to question, what is this me? This subject, this me, who's looking at a tree, oh, that tree is dying, is looking at, oh, this city is just getting very polluted, the weather is polluted, or oh, we used to have a beautiful beach and we don't have it anymore, it's destroyed, or now they're building all these condominiums and shopping malls all over my area. So you're always focusing on something. But you never pay attention to me, this me, this me, who is concerned about these things. What is this me? Who is this me? You never question its validity. Because no one has ever told you that. No one ever taught that to you. Oh, I had these past lives. And in the past lives, I've done this and I've done that. I need to go and do a clearing of my ancestry issues so I don't have problems in the future. I need to be careful not to create any bad negative karma in my future. I need to work on my traumatic issues that I had because I was sexually abused by my dad or my aunt or whatever and these things happen to me so i have these emotional issues but you never examine this eye you never come and see and take a look at it that whether this me that i grew up with all my life if it's real or not. No one has ever told you this. So you bring your attention inwards and come and challenge this I, this me, that has these issues because I'm trying to fix my issues in life, but it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. It doesn't seem like I'm finding any inner peace. No matter how much I work on myself, I'm still running around repeating the same pattern. I'm attracting the same people. I'm attracting the same negative stuff. I'm still lonely. I'm still single. I still haven't found peace. I'm still jealous. I'm still frightened. I'm still dealing with my emotional issues and traumas from childhood. I'm still regretting my decisions in life. But you're not examining this me. Who is this me? Where is this one come from? Your attention is on the objects. What about the subject? Challenge this thought of me, of who is this me, who am I, who is this thoughts, thought of me that is trying to fix things. Maybe this one is the problem. And examine that one, challenge it. Bring your attention towards it. Not that I feel hurt 
or I am scared, or I have a problem. No, who is this I who has a problem? Bring your attention to that one. Maybe if you get rid of that one, then all of a sudden you discover yourself that there is no problem. There's nothing to work on. Not on yourself, nor neither on yourself, nor in the world. How about that for a change? And in that process, you may discover something very, very valuable. You may discover something beyond your imagination. Something that may give you eternal peace and harmony continuously, not the kind of a peace that comes and goes, not the harmony that everything goes in your way in your life and you're happy with it, the kind of peace and harmony that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what goes in your way and what doesn't go in your way, that you're continuously in this place of equilibrium within yourself, regardless of the world and your personal events that happen. And that is what I'm interested in. A permanent state of equilibrium silence, bliss, and happiness that doesn't come and go. That's, that is not conditional on things going my way or things don't go my way. I want the real thing. The rest is the waste of my life. I don't want to waste my life chasing around, trying to get something that then I lose it next week. I want that which is always here, it's always present, it's always accessible and it, it is permanent. That's what I want. And that must be your very focus. Otherwise, you're going to go up and down and up and down and up and down and round and round and round and you don't get anywhere. You feel good, you feel bad, you're happy, you're sad. And the moment something happens in the world, your emotions are easily manipulated. You're afraid, oh my God, there's a new disease in China and it's gonna come and kill us all. There's a new kind of terrorism that they're gonna come and get us. That's not freedom, my brothers and sisters. You're not free. You're in captivity. You're in slavery. That's what it is. So we turn our attention inwards. And we go to the very source of I. And as we do that, we enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's all here within our own selves. The one I'm looking for 
is the one I'm looking from. Pay attention. The one I'm looking for is the one I'm looking from. You are who you are looking for. And all the answers in the world is within yourself. And everything that you need in this life, mark my words, please, everything that you need, you already have it within yourself. That's the beauty of life. That's the beauty of being incarnated in this life. The recognition of the truth of who you are, the recognition that that which you're looking for is already here inside yourself waiting to be discovered. But it does require a person who stops, puts the brakes on, and take their attention on the madness away and bring their attention inwards. And then Her Majesty will show herself to you. And then you will see that life is a miracle. You will see the synchronicity of life. You will see through this state that you're in, everything you need comes to you. Magically, Life creates situations and putting you in the right place all the time. And when I say the right place all the time, again, don't take me wrong. I'm not talking about things going your way. <clears throat> We're not talking about manipulating life. We're talking about surrendering to life. And in that surrender, you become the flow. It's very easy, and I know in my heart you can do it. With the right guidance and the right teachings, You can do it. You're already doing it right now. It's happening. You just keep following your heart and keep bringing your attention inwards to the source of who you are, which is silence. All right, now does anybody have any questions? If you do, uh, just raise your hand or write it on the chat box and I'll be more than happy to answer your question. Yeah. Yes, Rosemary. Rosalie, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. When something happened when you, when you're a trial, Okay. And you see the same happen again to your daughter. Then that time coming as a tsunami back on you. And I thought I had to put it back. Okay, say that again so I make sure I understand. Trial of, what do you mean? A court trial or just uh, like... No, I, I was abused <laughs> as a child. You were what? Abused. Sexual abuse as a child. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay. And that was thing that I had put on my back. 
It's yes. gone. Right. But then it's happened with my daughter. Okay. And then it's all coming back like a tsunami on me. Right, right. So it just brought all the memories back. Yeah. Yes, I understand. So I don't, but, I don't used to sit and think about what's happened before. Right. I tried to move forward. Right. I understand. But people said to me, that's a, that's a ring that you have to break. Right. So what you do is, let's say, in this situation, that sexual abuse happened to your daughter, and now it has triggered you, and all these emotions rising inside of you, and you're just reliving this sexual trauma. So what you do is you're simply, even though it's very uncomfortable, all these traumatic experiences are rising inside yourself and it's very painful. And what you do is you simply go into this place of A, observing these emotions rising. These traumatic emotions are rising inside you. They're very, very uncomfortable. But you, you bring your attention from identifying with them to simply observing them. And while you're observing them, you also feeling them. But now there is a difference. The difference is that when you're resisting these emotions, because nobody wants to feel the trauma. So we want to push it away as much as possible but obviously it haunts you back and it comes and catches you at one point in your life. So what you do is through your ability to observe them, to, through the ability of witnessing them, you acknowledging their presence, you acknowledge that they're here, the trauma, these horrible feelings are here and you acknowledge that they're here. You acknowledge that, yes, the sexual traumas are here. I'm experiencing them. But in the meantime, you know they're visiting you and they're not who you are. You tell yourself that they're here, they're visiting me. And as you are in this place, you allow your body to feel it. So you drop your resistance, even though it's very uncomfortable, you drop your resistance and you allow your body to feel it. You allow your senses to experience them. Yeah. And then, and then since there is no resistance, there is no resistance, then they lose their power. They have yeah. no power. I see that man has did that to my daughter. He still come here <laughs> to this place. And I don't know if I should smile or I should knock him down. But I can serve him coffee. I don't like what he have done. But I don't want to do any harm to him either. Right. And I people say, that. then you accept that what he have done. I can't do anything about it. Right. So, so you have encountered this, this man who's done things to your daughter? Yeah, you have a picture of him. You got okay. it from me in Sweden. Right, right. So for now, let's just speak about you and your experiences. Yeah. So, so, it's, so this is how, how you deal with these emotions. Because... When you're accepting, you're acknowledging the passage of an emotion. Emotion rises, whatever that is. I get really angry. I get very jealous. I get very frustrated. It's anxiety comes. And the emotion is so powerful that it's overwhelming and it takes over. It's much bigger than me. I can't really contain it. So in that moment, if I simply acknowledge its presence, 
Just like acknowledging a big storm, a huge storm, a big black cloud is really angry. Huge storm is coming. It comes over my house and hail and rain and snow starts to pull, to fall down. There's nothing I can do against it. It's much bigger than me. It's overwhelming. It's the same thing with the emotion. You simply acknowledge that it's here. And now keep this in mind. A lot of people come back and tell me, Zarathustra, I did what you told me to do, but it didn't work. I tried to tell myself it's not here. It's not here. I'm not saying that. I'm not teaching anyone to do any kind of positive thinking or positive affirmations saying that these emotions are not here. No, we're not resisting the emotions. The trauma is here and I'm really frightened and it's really shaking me physically and it has paralyzed me physically. I'm not resisting it. I'm simply saying it's here, but I'm not it. It's visiting me, it's passing through me. I acknowledge that it's here, but I'm it. And then it just goes away because there's no resistance. When there is resistance against an emotion that we don't want, the more we resist, the more the emotion persists. It gets stronger through our resistance. But if we simply stay with it and acknowledge its presence and feel it in our body and senses, but I'm not it. It's not happening to me. <coughs> it's passing through me because it has no power on, on the truth of who I am. And then it has no power at all. And it goes through you while you get affected when it's there and then it goes away. That's how you deal with it. I have another question here. Hi Kamala, it's nice seeing you. I haven't seen you for, for, for a while, sweetheart. Is that your daughter? Your son? Let's see. Your son? Yeah. Your son? Hi. Hi, sister. Yeah, it's my son, Michael. Michael, hello. Hi, Michael. Huh. Thank you. What, Hi. what Thank a you. sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, um, I guess you just answered part of my question with uh, Rosalie's question also. Okay, so yeah. a part of your question is answered. What is the other part that's not answered? Ah, yeah, well, you said something about, uh, you know, we work on ourselves. Uh, and then you said we are already, uh, we're already uh, divine. We're already, um, I don't know, perfect, but we're already divine. So should we not work on ourselves? But I guess you, you explained. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. What is it you need to work on if you're already God? You see this uh, earth, I feel, of course, I still feel sometimes hurt or I feel that people say something to me that I don't appreciate or uh, and I, I find myself reacting and um, I'm practicing working on myself right. instead of right. right well let's that's a very good thing you brought up and that's <clears throat> it's okay to react if somebody insults you and you react to it, whatever your reaction is. Or if you see something in life that you don't like, something happens 
and you don't like and you you have an emotion about it in this teaching i am not saying this teaching is not about becoming a robot yeah okay that nothing ever bothers me and no matter what happens i don't experience any emotions and i'm not referring to that when the more you become expansive the more you recognize yourself the more you also feel everything so you become sensitive and connected to everything so it's a natural as long as you have a physical body and you have five senses it's natural to feel and sense things and to be in interaction with life so that's perfectly fine honey i like things i don't like things but that doesn't make me forget who i am and that doesn't make me forget who you are and as well as if someone has done something not nice to me i don't when i look deep inside them i see the divine being within them but on a human level i may not like their their behavior i may not agree with them or i don't want to be with them in human level but but i never forget that they they have as much god inside them as i have inside me so i don't lose sight from the truth of who we are okay go ahead uh and and e even though i know that i am divine and the, i have a higher self and uh i st i can still be working on issues right because i want right. to be more balanced right so when you say issues you're talking about emotional issues and traumas and yeah, things it could like be that, that. yeah right. yeah right. yeah so so what i recommend is because i know a lot of people on this path and in all these years i've been teaching i come across the same people i met 10 years ago and today they're going to different courses and classes and doing the same work and nothing has changed they're still working on themselves now they're healing the child within now they're healing certain wounds now they're trying to heal this part with their father or mom it's the same story keeps going round and round and i don't see any changes yeah so the direct way and the fastest way in self realization is just to go straight to the source and to really examine who is this me who is this i who is hurt and needs to be worked on the source of myself this me this identification that i have with this guy named zarathustra who is hurt and i'm trying to fix it but why not examining to see that this me that i'm thinking needing fix fixing is it real or not does it exist or not and that's what i recommend for you to do examine that and you know what if it doesn't work you can always come back and do what you're doing yeah but give that a try for a month see that if it's real and it has any validity examine that for yourself who is this kamala who is this me that needs to be fixed and see maybe you can go beyond that and in going beyond that you realize that there's no fixing needs to be done because the real you has never been hurt. Mm. Okay? Yeah. yeah.
get, give it a try for a while and see if it works or not. And then come back here and we talk about it. Since you have nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's free, you know? And you, you it's, it's free and you do it, you do it on your, your own accord, you know? Yeah, okay. Really nice to see you, my sister. Oh, you too. Okay. Well, it's nice to see you all. Nice hearing from you. Um, <clears throat> next Wednesday evening, I have my 10th year anniversary of fifth dimensional quantum healing uh, at LAX Hilton. Uh, those of you who are interested, uh, uh, I hope I get to see you. If you have a desire to come and be a part of it, um, other than that, the Academy is going to be next Wednesday at the same time. I'm gearing up for uh, coming to Europe. And um, <clears throat> I've decided that this coming season, I uh, have created a private mentorship program. And I can take two students. It's a VIP program for two people who are interested in working on their issues and go deeper. Uh, two people is the most I can take in each quarter. Uh, you're welcome to contact me or go on my website under private coaching uh, to get more information about it. It's a four month program. I will be meeting with you uh, two to three times a month online between 90 minutes to 120 minutes. Depending on our avail availabilities, I will uh, be, we'll go over the issues and the problems that you want to work on and your goal, spiritual goal, where you like to get to. And then I will design a tailor-made program for you and we go one step at a time. So we meet up two to three times a month for four months. Uh, we meet each other in person one full day or two full days in that process of four months. You have access to all of my workshops and events around the world. And you get a uh, private room at my healing training program in Ore, uh, Sweden. So all of it is coming together. Feel free to reach out to me and if you're uh, serious about this then we set up a, a Skype appointment and I'll give you some more information. I send you lots of love and light. I look forward to seeing you next week. Just bring your attention inwards. Stay in your heart. Don't distract yourself with the blah, blah, blah that is you're hearing in your mind and in the world. Just stay focused on one point, which is the silence within yourself. And you will see your life begins to change miraculously. Love you very much. God bless you all. And I'll see you next week. Namaste. Namaste.